We're going to move on to a topic we'll talk at much more length about next week. Mm -hmm. In fact, we might even do a spoiler cast next spoiler week cast, all about cast, Doctor Strange. Cast. Now, of the three of us, only two of us have seen it. You're the unlucky Malcolm in the middle here who's not yet seen Doctor Strange. Mm -hmm. So next we're not going to talk about, we're not talking about spoilers, but we will talk a little bit about, and having just spoken about Deadpool, um, Doctor Strange, one... Eric, you reviewed the movie for us. The I did. review is live on the site. Um, one of sort of the general complaints people have had is that yet another superhero origin story, and that it follows a lot of familiar beats. Um, Deadpool also an origin story, even though the timeline of it was a little bit more non-linear in how they did yeah. it. Um, what, what do you think? Is there a valid criticism there in Doctor Strange being an origin story? Could we have introduced Doctor Strange? without necessarily making his origin the centerpiece of that. What if story. I said there was no valid criticism there, therefore destroying my own review? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will say that, like, I will say, while I stand by my review saying it feels like a sort of a bit overly familiar at this point, that's not to say you can't make a good origin story still. And if, there is something intrinsically appealing about the origin story, you know? It's, it's always... Even though there are familiar beats of like, I can do this amazing thing and I'm trying it out and now I'm getting better. There's something that's always fun about that. Yeah. Um, I do think with you know some of these big superhero movies, it just feels a little overly familiar because there's a certain kind of arc. And Strange in particular, uh, there couldn't help but be echoes of some specific superheroes with like what his path was. Yeah. Even going in, I mean, even before any of us saw it, we kind of knew... There's going to be some similarities to Iron Man mm -hmm. because it's the arrogant, well-off, brilliant guy who has his comeuppance and builds himself back In up. In the Far East, though. Yeah, 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 more powerful. Yeah. Um, well, like but Bruce that doesn't Lane. mean you can't yeah. still make a good origin movie. But, I mean, I'm glad you brought up Deadpool because I think maybe it does have to do some things with me, even whether it's messing with the order of things or maybe the way you present it. Um, not to say you can't still do it straightforward, but maybe sometimes it helps to have a little bit, you know, Yeah. Well, version. it also depends on how much of the movie you devote to the origin story. Yeah. If the origin story is all of Act One, yeah, like, audience doesn't need, need, need that anymore. They yeah. don't need a 30 to 40 minute full origin story. And yet Batman Begins was a, a two and a half hour origin story that, that worked because it Del, it, it, you know, it was the foundation it, for those two well, films. It and it was 10,000 comic book movies ago. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, exactly. it was, yeah but it dove into the psychology of the character, yeah. and it needed to establish him, re-establish him from the ground up as a human being coming off of uh, a completely different uh, you know, past yeah. interpretations of him where he's just a guy running around in a suit. Now, which is interesting, because you go back to Batman 89, which was pretty novel in that they didn't do the origin. They yeah. started right in. He's already, uh, I think they described it as fate accompli. Like he's already Batman and he's running around and kind of discover it that way. And that was a really smart choice. Um, and I remember reading interviews with Sam Hamm, the screenwriter at the time, back in great. Starlog magazine. Starlog. Yeah. Yeah. Starlog. Um, but uh, uh, they, you know, th that was a very purposeful decision because all the, the previous drafts of that were just, they were echoing Superman the movie. Which because is they were the make a work script. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So Faux bond. So there's definitely ways you, so I guess I'm wondering, could you have done Doctor Strange sort of like a Batman 89 where he's already, um, you know, uh, uh, Doctor Strange the sorcerer and there are like it's some sort of flashes to how he became that way. Well, what about the way that Marvel handled it with the second Hulk movie, where they basically did your origin story during this credit sequence and called it a day? I was like, yeah. you know how he became the yeah. Hulk. Now it's different yeah. because yeah. you don't know Doctor Strange, but you can you can and speed also through that the, stuff. I think there's something very specific about Doctor Strange of going from being a worldly person, materialistic, believing in science that there's nothing, you know, I don't believe in chakras, all that. Uh, to somebody who becomes <laughs> spiritual like that right. and that and I've said before on the show like that's an important arc but I do wonder if there was a way to tell that in a story that didn't feel quite as as conventional yeah it's interesting because you know uh, and again I, I, I genuinely liked Dr. Strange yeah, I, I, I gave it a 7.7 7 out of 10 and I, I had a good time with it I will see it again uh, but I was thinking about why did I like Ant-Man a bit more than Dr. Strange and Ant-Man is it's an origin story but I felt like there was enough differences both by having it be a legacy character, so he's not the first Ant-Man, yeah. he's you know the criminal who's really hired to commit a crime initially, 
there was enough of a slightly different tone to it that it didn't feel quite as uh, this is your destiny, you know? It was yeah. a layer it. of origin on top of a heist movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And plus, and having it be like there was another Ant-Man yeah. and just so it didn't quite... It's funny you should mention Ant-Man because just to circle back to Deadpool 2 real quick, look, that movie, Star Trek Beyond, there are a lot of movies that have lost their director pretty late in the game. Mm -hmm. Deadpool 2, we should point out, uh, doesn't have a firm release date. There was kind of a release date yeah. floating around out there for an unspecified Marvel Fox movie, but it's not like they were about to start shooting and the thing fell It'll through, so I, I think it'll be okay. Oh, yeah. But, like, uh, you know, they got Black Panther's origin basically out of the way yeah. in the Civil War, and that was fine. And then Captain Marvel, I'm sure we'll, we'll meet uh, Carol Danvers, an Infinity War, but you know how much will her movie be an origin story? Right, right. I think I feel like they might have said that hers will be more of a origin story than, but certainly Panther and Spider Man. Now Spider Man, of course, being they have the benefit of his origin having been told twice, uh, quite vividly. Will, will they go full the, Martha though and millennia. just show Uncle Ben dying every <laughs> time that oh, Spider Man comes on screen? Yes, yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, I'm sure that movie's going to deal with his origin. It's just, but he's already Spider Man, so it doesn't have to yeah. be the here's like you said. It doesn't have to be the, here's the first <coughs> act of the movie is like telling all that. Yeah. Is Electro's mom named Martha? I'm just going to get oh. to find out. <laughs> we used to have a bell. That's when I would have rung <laughs> it. Oh yeah, the bell, the Buffy bell. I know. Mm. All right. Well, let's move on from origins. But uh, tell us, what do you think? Do we need origins? stories, pros, cons, let us know what you thought about what we had to say.